Olympic start this week, and even if the Kiwi athletes don't get to wear medals round their necks, they'll still be wearing a precious Ngaitahu taonga. They're the first to lawfully wear authenticated snowflake ponamu since Ngaitahu took ownership of the resource 15 years ago. But Ngaitahu's warning, no one else have the right to have this, this most rare of ponamu, and the iwi's reclaiming the resource, which it says was stolen from them. Carmen Parahi reports. We're in a secret South Island location. So this is all stolen ponamu? We like to call it repatriated or um, mana restored ponamu. There are five shipping containers inside this warehouse full of ponamu worth millions. Uh, so the majority of stone has come back um, as a result of, I guess, um, court action and prosecution, and then some has been brought back uh, voluntarily. As part of its Waitangi Tribunal settlement, Maitahu received legal ownership of ponamu naturally occurring in their tribal lands in 1997. So this is Tahu Tahi here. Kara Edwards is from Te Runanga o Makafio in Westland, one of 18 legal entities, or Runanga, set up under the Maitahu iwi tribal structure in the South Island. Nine Runanga, including Kara's, are responsible for ponamu in their specific areas. Fifteen years on and Ngaitahu is slowly taking over control of New Zealand's ponamu industry, but not without controversy. We've got some uh, more ponamu. We have. More tahu tahi. Tahu tahi is the new name for the highly publicised and contentious stone, previously known as Upland Snowflake Ponamu, found on the Cascade Plateau in South Westland. It's illegal to have any tahu tahi in your possession. We've had a detective working with us who's been uh, really active in visiting retailers all around the country to let them know um, that this, it is illegal for them to have this ponamu in their possession and if they have it they need to give it back to Ngaitahu. Everyone working in the ponamu industry is under scrutiny. This is a legal stone, it's been stolen from Ngaitahu. Um, whether or not you knew about that, um, that's the situation. We can go through a process whereby you give it back willingly, um, otherwise we can look at a legal process. Since 2004, three Westland men, Harvey Hutton, Dave Saxton and his son Morgan Saxton were all convicted for illegally taking the stone. The court cases and legalities around ownership of Tahutahi turned locals against each other and caused friction amongst Kara's people. Well, it's of huge importance to us. It's uh, a taonga and it's home. It hasn't been at without its prices. But, um, we're looking forward um, with positivity. Sorry. Our own people have been involved with the removal of Tahutahi, and so that's meant a real internal struggle for our people. And it meant a long and arduous court process, which was taxing on a lot of our members. And people have personally been victimised because of that and been subject to, um, I guess, uh, r just absolutely fundamental racism from people not understanding the issues. In Greenstone country, tensions still run deep. At least two Hukatika retailers have been forced to hand back illegal snowflake. The tribe also confiscated stone from one of its own carvers. Everyone's been carving that stone since the mid-90s. You'll find this in every carver studio in the whole country. I mean, it's, that's how long it's been around. Local carver Bevan Climo admits he's bought, used and sold tahutahi in the past. He's bitter about the stone and how his tribe has taken control of the resource by policing the industry, including him. Just rocked up here looking for this upland snowflake stone. We call it upland bird shirt stone, of course. But... In May, the police and Ngaitahu's yeah. private ponamu investigator searched Bevan's property and seized a small amount of stone. Bevan says if he's charged for stealing ponamu, he'll fight his own people in court. Does it make you feel like a criminal? Uh, not a criminal, not at all, no. A thief? Um, it, it hurts my feelings making my own Fano and hapu and bloodlines and whakapapa, having your whakapapa and your mana trampled on, yeah, that hurts. Bevan was part of the group that set up the Ponamu management plan 10 years ago. He says what's evolved from it is a corporate braid of Ponamu by Ngaitahu, and it's not what was intended. We are the lion to the Ponamu, and the carving of it, and the working of it, and the trading of it. 
not these tar seal Maoris that live in the city. Uh, they wouldn't know, they wouldn't even know a pony move it hit them in the head unless it was in the form of a Mary. They wouldn't recognise it. They wouldn't know it. And they make the rules for us. Not 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 for me. They don't. Bevan warns Tahutahi may become too hot to handle for the pineapple industry and imported jade may become an easier option to use. It's not a particularly nice stone and I mean who'd want to work the stuff these days anyways? To me it's a tainted bloodstone. Pounamu market hawker and carver Jeff Mahuik is happy to work with the stone and Gaitahu. He admits he too bought stolen snowflake stone. I have been using snowflake pounamu or uh, tahu tahi pounamu for a uh, good nine years. Now, Jeff's Ngai Tahu's first authenticated carver, which means he can buy a pounamu direct from Ngai Tahu, and all his work will be traced through a certification scheme. When I looked at it and I thought, wow, this is what the industry needs. He was given special permission from Ngai Tahu to buy confiscated tahu tahi from them, which he used to make 380 miniature mere for the Olympians to wear. Basically, it was blood, sweat and tears, and it was blood, because when you're grinding on a grinder, you bleed. You, you cut, when you're doing 380 grinding movements, you actually cut, so yeah, yeah, my blood actually flowed on, onto, onto many of these pieces. <laughs> As Ngai Tahu rebuilds its corporate headquarters in earthquake-damaged Christchurch, they're also trying to rebuild the Pounamu industry, flooded with imported and stolen jade. It is a cheap and nasty industry, and uh, it's quite easy to see. You can walk around any tourism store in New Zealand, and uh, you know I don't feel anything but cheap and nasty coming from those pieces sitting on those shelves. Jamal Morgan helped develop the tribe's pilot authentication program designed to trace the retail life of a stone so consumers know where the ponomu is from, who carved it, when and why. The purpose of it is to actually provide confidence to the market, uh, maintain the manner of the stone and ensure it's there for generations after us. Bevan Climo disagrees with the authentication scheme. It's killing the industry. Raise the mana of the pana. The pana raises its own mana. But Naitahu is prepared to protect the stone at all costs. You know, it's, it's pillaging and, and raping the land like any other um, uh, natural Taonga resource. Naitahu's leaders are warning the industry they will tightly control the Pounamu market through its ownership and the authentication programme because they don't want to see a repeat of these scenes. Well, prior to 1997, Huge amounts of ponamu were being stripped out of our out of our lands, out of our ancestral lands, off our awa, and we had no control over that. You know, there's a huge, significant economic, spiritual loss for us, for Naitahu. So um, you're lucky with what you got away with prior to 1997, and we're in a different time now. I don't think this is anything different to what our people were doing 150 years ago, you know. This resource was maintained and protected, you know, by a musket, by a taiha, by a media. Now it's been protected by technology and innovation. <laughs>